Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Neil Arwin Mercado, reporter for Inquirer.net. So just a couple of days ago, the Supreme Court released the results of the 2019 uh, bar examinations, wherein 2,103 out of 7,685 examinees passed the exam. And among the passers, kasama natin today, is Mr. Kenneth Manuel. Hindi lang siya normal passer, number six lang naman <laughs> sa bar exam. Yeah. Hi, Kenneth. Good afternoon. Hello, Neil. Good afternoon, then. Okay, so how are you? Anong pinagkakabalahan natin now? I'm very sure you're still uh, on cloud, cloud nine. <laughs> Sobra, parang di pa rin paniwala with everything that has happened. But of course, I need to be back to reality. Balik ulit sa trabaho. Siyempre, hindi naman pwedeng forever na on cloud nine. So, ayun, busy ulit sa work, among other things. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, for sure, a lot of people are very curious. Give us a picture kung ano yun nangyari on the day na you found out that you passed the exam and you are among the, the uh, top notchers pa for this year's bar exam. Actually, on the, noong mismo April 29, I was still asleep when the bar results were released. <laughs> As in, hindi ko siya naabangan on the first minute that it was released. Uh, kinakabahan kasi ako na kin- kin- kinakabahan ako tingnan yung results and therefore I decided to slept through it. Ang ginawa ko is the madaling araw before nagpuyat ako, I slept at around 4am or 5am dahil ang intention ko, I want to wake up at 12 noon or 1pm para pagkagising ko, release na yung bar results. Because there are some who would go to the Supreme Court website and refresh the website every now and then para makita kung release na yung results. Pero sabi ko, parang mamamatay yata ako sa kaba <laughs> kung yun yung gagawin ko. So, ang ginawa ko is nagpuyat ako and tinulog ko yung entire duration ng morning para pagkagising ko in release na yung bar results. So, ayoko may ibang magsasabi sa akin kung ano yung bar results kasi baka minsan kasi may mga leakage yung mga yan o kaya may mga rumors as to who passed, as to who didn't, or as to who tapped the bar. So parang gusto kong verified information lang. So I asked one friend to send me an email. I oh. actually set up two emails, two oh. email accounts the night before. Nag-set up ako ng two email accounts the night before. Sabi ko, um... Send mo ako ng email doon sa first account in case I pass the bar. And since I realized na medyo feeling ko mahirap i-deliver yung news of failure in case nababagsak ako, I set up an email account kapag bagsak ako, then send an email there. Send an email there kahit di mo sabihin bagsak ako, basta kapag na-receive nung email na yon yung email mo, nung email account na yon yung email mo, then it means, alam ko na, yung ibig sabihin na bagsak ako. Because I was still really entertaining the possibility that I might fail the bar exams. So, yun yung dagdag sa anxiety, kaya tunulog ko throughout. Then, 11.58 a.m., nagising ako. 11.58 a.m., nagising ako. Normally, ang normal gising ko is yung sobrang hindi pa ako magigising, yung sobrang anto, yung tipong kaya ko pa matulog ulit. But of course, April 29 is not an ordinary day. So as soon as I woke up, kinabahan agad ako na parang this is the results day. Ano oras na? It's 11.58. So presumably, na-release na yung results ng bar. My phone is in airplane mode, meaning walang signal, walang data, and therefore, hindi ko makikita, hindi ko nakikita, hindi makapasok yung mga calls, uh-huh. yung mga messages. So I still have no idea what already happened. Uh-huh. I opened my tablet, nandoon yung Gmail, nandoon yung Gmail, and then wala yung mga social media apps doon, Gmail lang yun nandoon. Then I checked muna doon sa unang, doon sa pangalawang email na sasendan kapag bagsak ako. I refreshed, walang email doon. Then doon sa email na sasendan kapag pasado ako, ni-refresh ko, then doon nakasulat as the email subject without any message. Email subject lang. Attorney Kenneth Manuel, 6th placer, 2019 bar examinations. Tapos parang sobrang gulat ako kasi I was really not expecting na pupunta ako sa top 10 or sa placers ng bar examinations. So the first thing I did after reading it 
As in, kapos pa ako sa hiningan, I am still catching my breath kasi parang hindi ako makapaniwala to yun, was to call the person who sent the email at ang una kong sinabi sa kanya, kung ito to ba to? Na-verify mo ba to? I was really in disbelief. Siya, congrats ng congrats. Tapos ako, parang pinagdududahan ko pa na, totoo ba to? Sure ka, ganyan. He told me to already go online because the results are already out. Everyone has been tagging me. Everyone is posting on my Facebook timeline. Kalat na yung balita na nandun na. So, when I went online, ay na, my notifications just burst with all messages, all tags from friends. And the weird thing is, medyo unique yung, kumbaga, unique yung feeling, especially uh-huh. for our batch of lawyers, kasi um, with the pandemic, with yeah. the enhanced community quarantine. The thing is, I'm separated kasi from my family. My family is in the province, like my mom is in Tarlac. Tapos ako nandito sa Manila, so I'm living alone. So, alam mo yun, wala akong kasama dito to share my victory with. So, I was, I was really cursing, talagang parang, I was really shocked all by myself. Kasi wala akong kasama dito. So, parang, nakakabali yun, na, nakaka, parang sobrang lutang, hindi pa nang makapaniwala up until now na nangyari lahat ng iyon. Simple celebration lang since I cannot do much because of the ECQ. So, I just phoned in some pizza, pa-deliver ako ng pizza, then kumain ako ng pizza alone dito sa aking room. Then, after, kung makon-verify yung results, na totoo nga, this is the list from the Supreme Court, ang ginawa ko is, I immediately went to the my family's group chat sa Messenger. Tapos nag-type lang ako doon, maabogado na ako. Without saying kung ano yung place ko, ganyan. As in, simple lang, maabogado na ako. And soon enough, yung group chat namin sa family was flooded by congrats. Soon nagpo-forward na sila ng mga pubmats from different news sites na nag-ilista ng mga top-notchers. Nagpo-forward na sila ng messages from our extended family members. So, sobrang saya. Noong April 29, kasi finally... The days leading to the results kasi sobrang kinakabahan ako. Kasi I'm still entertaining the thought that I will fail the bar examination. So parang sobrang kabado ko. Every now and then, my heart would palpitate. Sobrang bigat ng pakiramdam ko. I cannot focus. I cannot really concentrate on what I am doing. Parang palaging nagsaspiral out yung aking mga thoughts. So parang finally, April 29 is the day of relief kumbaga, na nakuha ko out of so many days of anxiety. Mm, because usually, ano yun eh, the, the uh, date of the exam, medyo matagal yan before the Supreme Court releases the the results. So it's a really yeah. thing then. So, Especially, uh, nung in-announce the Supreme Court, April 23, it was announced by the Supreme Court na they will release the results by April 29. Prior to April 23, parang wala akong pake about the results kasi parang indefinite naman yung date so why would I care about something na hindi ko alam kung mangyayari in the future so nung nag-announce na na this is it the date is April 29 yun na doon na nag-start talaga yung sobrang kaba okay so now let's uh, let's backtrack a bit balik tayo balikay natin simula sa pinakasimula I have a couple of questions uh, saan nagsimula yung aspiration to be a lawyer and then uh, who is uh, Kenneth as a law student Saan nagsimula ang aspirations as a lawyer? Well, we won't step a huge deal in time dahil medyo recent ilang naman na, na-open up yung possibility na mag-enter ng law school. Ang pangarap ko talaga when I was a kid was to not become a lawyer kasi wala nga akong idea back then kung ano ba ginagawa ng isang abogado. Kung ano rin napapagod ko sa TV, perhaps that's it. But, pero ang pangarap ko talaga is, um, ano ba mga pangarap ko dati? Um, let's say, pangarap ko maging weather forecaster uh-huh. for some reasons. Kasi as a kid, I really watch Ernie Baron do the uh-huh. weather forecasting. At natutuwa ako sa manner ng kanyang, sa segment niya doon sa primetime news. And I also wanted to be a teacher. Tapos perhaps naging pangarap ko maging graphic designer or web designer. Perhaps kasi natutuwa akong i-modify yung Friendster account ko dati nung uso pa yon. So, um, the thought of becoming a lawyer was only entertained noong 
fourth year na ako sa aking pre course, I took up Bachelor of Science in Accountancy. So, nung two months or two months or one month before graduation, doon sa aking alma mater, Colegio de San Juan de Letran, yung vice president namin for academic affairs, si Father Juan B. Ponce. Sabi ni Father Ponce sa akin na he knows, he personally knows the dean of the law school sa UST, si Dean Nilo Divina. So, connected daw si Dean Divina and si Father Ponce. And Father Ponce told me that he can connect me to Dean Divina for a scholarship sa law school. So, parang sabi ko, parang, Uy, this is a good deal. There is nothing to lose naman since this is a scholarship. So, ang in ko, makakalibre ako ng pag-aaral, ganyan. So, sabi ko, parang, it will benefit me naman kung mag-aaral ako ng loom and libre. So, why not take the chance? So, doon lang pumasok sa isip ko na pumasok ng law school. That was mga bandam January or February of 2014. Uh-huh. So, yun na. And afterwards, after passing the boards, October that year, mga bandang June or May of 2015, I took the entrance exam sa UST and then I was accepted as a student sa University of Santo Tomas. Kenneth, as a law student, well, medyo typical, I would say na typical na law student lang naman, aside from the fact na working, because medyo rare ang working students sa UST. We started out sa UST with nine sections and only two sections are considered as working sections. Kasi kapag working sections, kapag working students, hinihiwalay para yung schedule ma-tailor fit for working students such that 5 p.m. every weekdays yung earliest na start tapos medyo fully loaded yung weekends. So, two sections, yung working section, I was with the second working section, then typical law student naman na, of course, napapagalitan ng professor, na especially I had my fair share of shameful recitations. I was once called na um, by my professor, the, de- the late Dean Aligada, professor ko sa Wills and Succession, sabi niya sa akin na my grammar is so horrible, na I should go back to grade 3 and study in basic English again nila ang, may mga professors din na nanlalait ng mga nanlalait ng pagkatao mo ganyan na parang decorum mo parang they test if you are really strong when it comes to argumentation kung kung hindi ka kumbaga bigla na lang magbo-burst into tears ganyan so i had my fair share of shameful scenes in law school i also had exams with low grades, for example, dun sa criminal law review ko with Prosecutor Garcia. Some law students can relate. Hirap na hirap ako sa criminal law because I can't really properly name the cr- proper crimes. So, nagkakaroon ako ng scores, examination scores, major examination scores na 29 over 100, 35 over 100. At ang medyo mahirap kasi sa law school is hindi siya hindi siya na tra transmute parang depende sa professor kung mag adjust siya ng grades pero normally wala siyang transmutation talaga if you'll follow the school policies so binanggit ko kanina na I was connected with Dean Divina as a scholar so ang impression ko is um libre yung pag-aaral ko kaya ko siyang i-maintain hanggang mag fourth year sa law school well unfortunately Hindi ko, siya ka, hindi ko siya na-maintain talaga. Hindi ko na-maintain yung scholarship kasi there was a semester na bumaba ako doon sa required average. So by second year, first sem, I was no longer a scholar of UST. I was no longer a scholar of UST and I really had to pay the entire tuition. Not until I got a private scholarship from Chief Justice Panganiban and the Foundation for Liberty and Prosperity. So doon, for a whole year, I paid my entire tuition and parang yun yung time na parang gusto ko na rin mag-quit. So parang common naman to for, common naman to among law students, we all thought about quitting at some point in time na ang hirap na nito, kaya, kaya ko pa ba? And my, that point 
came to me when I was in second year nung parang feeling ko hindi ko nabayaran. Hindi ko na kayang bayaran yung tuition fees. Kasi the problem with my situation is my parents are not supporting me dun sa pursuit ko sa law school. Kasi they are both unemployed. So parang kami lang magkakapatid yung bumubuhay. Ang gusto sana ng parents ko is for me to continue working as an accountant. Tapos kapag stable na yung finances, saka ako na i-pursue kung ano yung gusto kong i-pursue. Well, okay. medyo naging premature nga yung pag-enter ko ng law school kasi I'm on the presumption nga naman na I will be on a scholarship, which okay. ayun nga, I was not able to maintain. So, ayun, um, um, kaya na sa law student is um, pretty much ordinary. Well, thankfully, minsan nagiging dean's lister, pero I'm not a consistent dean's lister. Parang palubog, palit, lulubog, lilitaw sa dean's list. And thankfully naman, nakagraduate, ng, nakagraduate on time. Nakagraduate in four years, despite the very hectic schedule. And I graduated cum laude sa UST. Okay. I graduated yata parang number six din sa batch <laughs> namin. Then, ang isa pang major siguro na gusto kong i-share is yung struggles of being a working student. Kasi parang marami rin nagtatanong sa akin na kung paano ko na pagsasabay. Kasi law school entails a lot of reading. It really consumes time. So, Paano pa yung mga working students na nagtatrabaho full-time sa umaga, 8 to 5, in my case, 7 to 4, kasi 5 yung class eh. 7 to 4, and then have classes ng 5 to 9 p.m. and have the time to study for the next class and have the time to prepare for work. Well, tinatanong palagi yung ang question is, what, how do I manage my time? Well, ang palagi kong sagot is, in the first place, is it even managed? <laughs> Kasi parang hindi naman talaga siya managed at all. I have my calendar, yung Google Calendar, nandun lahat ng mga gusto kong gawin, pero parang hindi ko siya nasusunod. Nandun yung mga dapat kong gawin, pero I'm always not on track. In law school, we call it backlogs, kumbaga. Uh-huh. So parang ang daming backlogs na hin- dapat ito na binabasa ko pero nandito pa rin ako sa previous chapter, sa previous section, sa previous articles. So m- palaging ganun most of the time, everything is always rough. Everything is always chaotic. So wala talagang time management. Ang siguro masabi ko lang is I always use my time productively. Na although hindi ko na meet yung schedule, most of my minutes, most of my hours, I do either for work or for studies. Like, parang medyo wala ako inaaksaya. Of course, aside from rest, kasi kailangan ko talaga magpahinga because uh-huh. of health reasons. Aside from rest, kapag gising ako, parang nababother ako na wala akong ginagawang productive, either for work or for studies. So, parang yun lang siguro yung naging discipline throughout the four years of law school. Uh-huh, uh-huh. So we were before this interview we were talking a bit and you mentioned that this is your first time to take the uh, bar exams. I'm very curious about your expectation dito sa exam and what preparations yung mga ginawa mo uh, for uh, for this exams kasi I also have my friends na in med school and in in law school and ang common stereotype sa kanila is ah, med school yan, law, law student yan, walang mga social life yan. So, ano yung mga preparations for this 2019 bar exams? Ano, ano yung itsura ng schedule mo around that time? Um, schedule was also really hectic kasi I did not stop working during the bar review. As in, after graduation, I still taught full-time sa Review School of Accountancy or RESA. Nagturo pa rin ako for uh, CPA board exam examinees. Tapos kapag gabi, papasok ako sa review classes. So, hectic pa rin ang schedule. It's the same old routine. Nagigising ng maaga, coming for work, and then turo, turo. Then, afterwards, pagod na. Kasi teaching is really physically exhausting. Sobrang nakakapagod magturo, especially in a review center setup na sobrang laki ng classroom, 200 people in a classroom, so kailangan medyo 
very alive ka magturo or else tutulugan ka ng mga estudyante mo. So, sobrang nakakapagod magturo. Then, eventually, pagdating ko sa 5 to 9 class, parang sobrang lutang na, sobrang pagod na, na parang gusto ko na lang magpahinga. So, ang nangyari is, ganun, almost every day na paguran, as in sagad-sagaran, then pagkatapos ng review classes at 9pm, I'll try to open my notes, I'll try to open my reviewers or books for one hour or two hours hanggat kaya pa ng mata ko, hanggat kaya pa ng isip ko. Kasi I feel that it will make no sense kung pipilitin ko lang sarili ko mag-aaral kung wala doon yung isip ko. So mga one hour or two hours, mag-aaral ako, then of course, I'll have my sleep. Then, inaaral ko rin minsan yung kailangan kong ituro for the next day. So, nakikihati rin yun sa oras ng pag-aaral ko. So, yung preparations is, ganun nga yung nangyari. Um, kulang sa oras, yung preparation. Time and, ex- and exhaustion are the main enemies, kumbaga, doon sa preparation. And of course, on the side of the bar syllabus, sobrang dami ng batas na kailangang arale. Napakalawak ng coverage ng bar examinations. And sabi nga nila, in order to master the bar examinations, we have to study our references, our books at least twice. Like, kailangan mga pag-second reading kami. Ang problema sa akin, I was not even able to finish my first reading. Oh. So, parang alam ko sa sarili ko na hindi ako prepared. Hindi ako nakapag-round 2 ng aral. Yung round 1 ko, hindi ko pa natapos. So, I will just rely on the voices of my professors na sana ay marinig ko during the bar <laughs> exam proper sa utak ko. I'll just rely on what I have studied. Tapos, Alam, medyo alam ko naman yung basic principles ng batas. Kung di ko maisagot yung specific, I'll rely on those basic principles na lamang. Well, yung dun sa, kon- mis- dun sa conception rather na law students and med students walang social life, I'd say that is not true. Well, for some, well, for some that will be true. For some, that will be true. Pero for some, that will be true. Sa some na yun, kasama ako. At dahil medyo, admittedly, wala akong social life masyado kasi, alam mo yun, I have to work and I have to study at the same time during the bar review. So, parang cut off muna talaga yung social life. Siguro parang mix, parang commingled na yung social life and study life na pinagsasabay ko na kasama ko mag-aral friends, ganyan. So, parang doon na nangyayari yung socialization while studying. Parang multitasking. Pero with the rest of the law students and med students, of course, you just have to go to social media, parang check Twitter, check Facebook, and you will see na sobrang alive ng mga law students and med students. Kasi, of course, we have our limits na nakaka-burn out din naman kung palagi na lang nag-aaral ng tuloy-tuloy. We have limited absorption capacity sa ating utak. So, ayun, parang it's important to have to do things that will distress, that will relieve us from the stress, and that is, of course, through social... One of the means is through socialization. So, hindi ito, na walang social life. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, now, a lot of people are wondering, ano bang itsura ng bar exams? Ano yung composition, kumbaga? Uh, how does it happen? I understand that uh, it happens on a weekend, and then, um, yun. pero ano yung mismong itsura ng exam? Is it your typical na na exam or more essays, more defense in it? Hmm. Um, bar exams composed of eight subjects for uh-huh. four Sundays. Each subject is four hours. Uh, bar exams, um, ang structure ng bar exams is um, 100% essays. Uh-huh. 100% na essay writing. So, alam mo yun, ang sagot talaga ay paragraphs. That's why matagal siyang checkan. Kaya, November yung bar, November 2019 yung bar, na-release lang yung results na, eto, April 2020. Late April 2020, dahil, of course, the examiners, the checkers, will still read the essays, checkan pa nila, and they will give points accordingly. Yung mga essays, in various numbers then hindi siya fixed number of essays like there are subjects na will demand 40 essays from you there are some subjects na 30 essays depende sa pointing system ng examiner 
because there are essays that are worth three points, especially kung kailangan niya na mahabang paliwana, medyo tricky yung question. There are essays na magpapa-define lang, define this term or distinguish one term from another term, mga one point or 1.5 points lang. So, iba-iba yung manner of questioning, pero wala siyang true or false, hindi siya yung multiple choice questions. So, ang isang problem din sa bar examination is yun nga, it's the, actually one of the toughest problems I faced in the bar examination is penmanship and writing endurance. Kasi maayos yung penmanship ko only if short duration lang yung pagsusulat. Uh-huh. Ang nangyari kasi is 8 hours in a Sunday ka magsusulat ng essays. At medyo hindi ko na-practice yung sarili ko to write for 8 hours. By the time that I was in my 5th or 6th hour, sa second subject na nung panghapon, sa 5th or 6th hour, namamagana yung writing hand ko. Uh-huh. Namamagana yung right hand ko. Tapos parang iniinda ko yung sakit and at the same time, kailangan kong gandahan yung sulat ko. Because ang concept is, if pangit yung sulat mo, then how would it be understandable for the person who will check your paper? So uh-huh. most likely, kung pangit ang sulat, baka markahan as wrong. So uh-huh. there is that fear na hindi basahin yung essays, kahit may substance, if pangit yung sulat. So talagang pinipilit ko ayusin, kahit feeling ko sobrang nagiging pangit na yung sulat ko. Dahil iba rin kasi ako mag-grip ng pen, hindi siya yung ordinary grip ng pen. Hindi kasi ako naturuan ng tama nung <laughs> elementary. Parang mag-isa lang ako humawak ng pen at magsulat. So, iba yung pagkahawak ng pen and madali mag-strain yung kamay ko. By the end of the first Sunday, namamaga yung aking writing hand. Sinalon pass ko for a day. Then nakita sa work the next day na may salon pass yung kamay ko. Oh, what happened? Nagpagalip ako ng bar exam. Namamaga po yung kamay ko. Oh. At talaga, start na bar exam. Ganyan-ganyan. Then... Hindi pa rin naalis yung maga after two or three days. Nagpa, nag, pumunta ako ng spa, nagpamassage ako ng kamay, specifically my writing hand, para lang ma-fix. But okay. hindi siya na ayos talaga. Dinala ko yung maga ng kamay ko from second Sunday to the third Sunday up to the fourth Sunday. I sobrang struggle na i-maintain yung composure uh-huh. while writing. Because aside from you thinking what is the right answer aside from thinking how you would phrase or you would construct your sentences kailang pang isipin na kailangan kong i-manage yung pain na nararamdaman ko doon sa kamay ko so parang dagdag burden sa during the bar examinations so yon bar exams 100% essays uh-huh. talaga siya okay so now that you have passed the the bar exams uh, after sa lahat ng pinagdaanan mo as a working student then and all that, you were juggling yung being student and working. Now that you have passed the bar exams, what's next? May, ano, mayroon ka bang specific uh, field in uh, law that you are eyeing to pursue? Um, definitely, I'm planning to pursue a career in tax. Uh-huh. Kasi tax is, kumbaga, one of the most frowned upon subjects in law school. Isa sa mga, kumbaga, hate, hate test ng mga tao. Yung hate test by law students and at the same time, hate test by ordinary citizens. Kasi, alam mo yun, wala namang kasi bayad ng tax. Kasi it's their hard-earned money na nakakatasan ng tax. So, I want to venture into tax practice. Kasi, una, background ko is, but uh, I am a CPA, graduate of Bachelor of Science in Accountancy. So, I might as well use that background in or, eh, sa aking tax practice para hindi masayang yung aking quilo. And of course, tax is something that really affects everyone. Eh, in Medyo, we take it for granted, pero ang dami-daming aspects ng taxation na nakapaligid sa atin, which, uh-huh. and ang dami-daming problems arising out of taxation, especially, um, battle between the taxpayers and our government authorities, especially the BIR. So, parang I would like to help with that. And uh-huh. of course, parang one of my end goals, if papalarin, well, long shot, 
I don't know if mangyayari. Parang minsan na envision ko yung sarili ko na maging justice of the Court of Tax Appeals. I I don't want I medyo ay, hindi ko gusto yung sa Supreme hindi ko gusto Supreme Court kasi sobrang lawak ng knowledge lawak. na kailangan alam doon. Unlike about Court of Tax Appeals, di ba kapag ano? Yeah. Ano ko court of Court of Court of Tax Appeals specialized lang. So parang uh, medyo doon lang ako. And currently no, I'm really practicing that na uh, I'm currently connected with Divina Law. I'm a associate there specializing with taxation. And I'm really learning a lot. Then sa Review School of Accountancy where I am a CPA reviewer, I likewise teach taxation. Uh-huh. Definitely also entering the legal academy is one of my goals as well. Gusto ko maging bar reviewer for tax at the same time continuing my current job as a CPA reviewer for the same subject as well. Then of course I have my personal advocacies as well na parang gusto ko ring personal advocacies na upon years we years in my professional career na parang gusto ko rin puntahan after everything has become stable. Um, since I am a member of the LGBTQ plus community, I really advocate for equality. And since I am an educator, field of education then, like uh-huh. students' rights, education reforms, parang ang, these are kumbaga fields, these are possible prospects that are really close to my heart. Uh-huh, uh-huh. So any message to doon sa mga future and next batches of of uh, bar exam takers also particularly as a working student any message to to working students uh who are studying and are pursuing uh law right now To the aspiring lawyers of course no sugar coating guys mahirap it is <laughs> really difficult During my time in law school, I would describe it as hell kasi sobrang nahihirapan. Parang gusto ko nang biyakin yung sarili ko, parang hatiin yung sarili ko. Gusto ko magkaroon ng, four, ng 36 hours a day and 8 days a week para alam mapagkasa ko lahat ng gusto kong gawin at para lang matapos lahat ng aaralin. Pero of course, um, although it is difficult, although it is really tough, we must recognize that Nothing is really too tough that we can surpass. Hindi porket mahirap, not just because it's difficult, it's already a sign for us to stop. Uh-huh. Obstacles are placed there to be hurdled. Hindi nilagay ang obstacles as a signal na, uy, I need to give up na pala kasi may obstacle dyan. No, these obstacles are there for you to pass through. And that is essentially what kept me through law school. When you are now in law school or if you will be taking the bar or if you are still in your pre-law listening to this, always remember your purpose, always remember your dream. And palagi ko siya sabi na if you remember your purpose, if you remember why you started, if you remember why you dreamed in the first place, that will be your fuel, that will be your drive towards reaching your goals. Your purpose might be for your family or your loved ones to make them proud or to lift your family or loved ones out of poverty. Or your purpose might be as noble as for the society, like to fight for injustices and inequality in our society. Ang point lang is, alalahanin natin kung bakit ba tayo nagsimula talaga. At isipin natin na we have already reached this far, we have already set our minds to it. Kung nagawa naman ng iba, why not? gawin din natin. So, that is my drive. Kumbaga, inaalala ko lang kung ano ba yung mga gusto kong mangyari talaga. And that pushed, that kept me going doon oh. sa aking journey. Kasi nung na-flunk ako sa scholarship, nung natanggal ako sa scholarship, nung nagkaroon ako ng bagsak, nung sinasabon ako ng professors ko, sinasabi ko rin palagi na I have so many opportunities to quit Like, I can just stop out of law school. Pwede naman drop sa law school. No, natanggal ako sa scholarship. But no, I decided to continue. Kasi nasa isip ko na kapag mahirap ang isang bagay, when a thing is difficult, meaning it is worth to achieve it. So, yun ang masabi ko sa mga aspiring lawyers that the dream to become a lawyer, the hardship that you will go through is something that is really worth it in the end. Okay, thank you so much, Kenneth. Again, congratulations. 
I can't imagine, I can only imagine what you're feeling right now after knowing <laughs> you number six ka again. Uh, so again, congratulations and thank you for granting, for giving us your time for this interview and we wish you all the best moving forward and for sure, maraming opportunities already waiting for you, especially after the results of the exam. Thank you, Neil. Thank you. Thank you so much. Again, this is Neil Arwin Mercado, reporter for Inquirer.net. Uh, everyone, keep safe, stay at home. <laughs>